is set and we can start on the final uh, part of today's uh, ER session. So, let us get started with the solutions. Um, okay, so, the tutorial was to design an ER diagram for a railway system, which has a few basic pieces of information, highly simplified. And uh, let me first uh, give you the solution. It is also available on the Moodle site, but not yet made visible because I did not want it to be visible until everyone has had a chance to try it out. I will make it visible at the end of today's session. So, the things which we need to model are, are basically we start with the entities and then add the relationships. So, we have listed it informally here as part of the problem specification. In general, what all do you think we would need to model in a railway system? At least from uh, the passenger information viewpoint. The actual Indian Railways needs to model lots and lots more stuff, but let us just worry about the passenger side of things. So, first of all, uh, you have stations, of course, you go from one station to another, and then you have tracks connecting stations. This is something passengers often do not need to really worry about, but occasionally they do because of rerouting and so on. And uh, then you have trains and schedules for the trains. Then you have passenger bookings, uh, which go from one uh, station to another on a train. So, now, uh, what are the details which we need for each of these things? We have made some simplifying assumptions here. So, first of all, if you see tracks, it is uh, pretty complicated actually. Uh, there are often multiple tracks between any pair of stations. Uh, sometimes a track has a platform at a station, sometimes it does not. There are uh, in suburban sections in Mumbai, for example, there are fast tracks, slow tracks. Some of the stations have platforms on all uh, four tracks, some have it on two only, some have six platforms. Life is pretty complicated in reality, but we have avoided all that and kept it very simple. And we are assuming that there are tracks con uh, connecting stations which are specified, specific stations. And we are going to assume there is just one track for simplicity, and uh, we are not going to worry about any further details of the tracks. We are just saying these two stations are connected by a direct track with nothing in between, no stations in between. Again, in reality, as you know, there are many, many more things. There are points which connect two tracks, there are signals, there are uh, cabins, there are whatnot, level crossings, and so forth. Again, we are simplifying life greatly. So, uh, these are the basic entities and now there are schedules which record uh, what time a train passes through. Now, sh what should this schedule be? Should it be an entity set? Should it be a relationship set and so forth? Okay. So, let us um, maybe go to the whiteboard and uh, start working on it, but yeah, before that uh, this is the last couple of points from the problem statement. Uh, in reality, trains can start on one day and reach next day, the day after that even in some cases. But uh, to make our life simple, we are just going to assume a time that trains reach on the same day. So, you just need a start time and end time, that is it. Um, and uh, furthermore, trains go through a number of stations and uh, our schedule includes stations where the trains do not stop. This is uh, sometimes published by the railway, sometimes not, but surely the railways knows when a train is supposed to go through a station, regardless of whether it stops or not. So, our train schedule is going to contain the time through each station. And as the problem statement says, uh, if the train does not halt, we are going to make time in equal to time out. If it does halt, we will make sure it is at least a one minute halt. And then there is a sequence numbering. Why is uh, this important? If you see a, a relation with just the time in, time out and so forth, maybe you could sort it, but you would not know which are adjacent stations and so forth. So, we are going to assume that the data will contain a sequence number, uh, the order in which a train visits each station along its route. So, that is for the track. For the passenger booking side of things, um, as we said, we already need to know which train, which is the from station to station, and then we need uh, the usual information about which coach, seat number, passenger names, and so forth. 
Now, uh, if you wanted to build an ER diagram where passengers are modeled as entities, we have to create a person or passenger entity. We have made it clear here that we do not want that. The Indian Railways does not really care whether you have traveled with them 5 times before or 10 times before or you are coming for the first time. Airlines on the other hand are different. They have uh, frequent flyer programs which aim to lure back passengers who have been regularly traveling with them and give them good deals so that they will, the, the people who travel most will be loyal to you and would not switch to some other airline. The railways does not need to do that. So, in, in the case of such an airline system, a passenger might be an entity because they want to keep track of all the journey that the trips that a particular passenger has made. So, again for the railways we decided we do not care about it. Okay, so, that is the setup. Now, let us start working on the uh, ER diagram. Let us get the whiteboard up here. The first is we need to model a station. Okay, so, station is an obviously an entity and what are the attributes of it? Uh, usually there is a station code to uniquely identify a station. There is usually a name also for it, not just usually, all stations do have names. And uh, in general there may be other information, but I think for our purpose um, there is not much else that we need, that is it. Next, uh, we have uh, the uh, tracks which go between stations. So, uh, that is a relationship, we will come back to it. What are the other entities? We have a train which is an entity. So, what are the attributes of train? There is a train number, there is a name maybe we should call it train name or some such thing. And for our purpose, that is it. In reality, again, uh, there is a lot more detail uh, associated with a train. Uh, how many coaches does it have uh, and, and so on and so forth. What are the types of coaches? Again, we are going to simplify our job. But if you want to make an actual booking system, you do need that information. Um, how many second class coaches? How many uh, AC, third AC, second AC? How many seats in each and so forth? We are ignoring all that. Next, we need to have a booking. Okay, so, what is a booking? We are going to treat a booking as an entity. Now, if you had a passenger and a, a train and so forth, maybe you could treat a booking as a relationship, uh, but it would get a little messy. Um, passenger may have multiple bookings on a train, and as we saw, uh, between a particular pair of entities, you can have only one instance of a particular relationship. So, it is actually much cleaner to treat a booking as an entity rather than as a relationship. Uh, but now, what is a booking for? Okay, is it a booking for a train on a date? Is it a booking for a particular inst uh, you know. So, this is a train right. The train is just a number and a name. Uh, so, now we can think of a particular train running on a particular date. We could think of it as a weak entity which is a train uh, instance or some such thing. So, that is an option. Uh, Let us uh, keep it simple and not worry about it, but if we did wish to do that, uh, we could um, create a weak entity linked to train which is a particular instance of a uh, train journey. So, we are not going to do that. So, now what is a booking? So, booking must have some kind of ID, booking ID, uh, PNR, let us call it a PNR because that is what the Indian Railways calls it, I think. And then uh, what else is there with the booking? It usually has passenger names. Um, so, we could uh, treat that as a multi valued attribute perhaps, but actually it is a little more complex. Uh, along with passenger names, for each passenger, what all does the thing record? It has a name, it has an age, a gender and a seat or birth number. So, we can put all that in there, but before that let us put the other details. 
a booking is for a particular train. So, do we have to put that as an attribute? Should train number be an attribute of booking? No, because we have modeled train as an entity set. Uh, there should be a relationship between booking and a train. So, let us say uh, booking train is the relationship between booking and train number. Uh, booking is also uh, on a particular date. So, let us put the date here. And furthermore, a booking need not be from the starting point to the ending point of the train. It could be from any intermediate station to any other intermediate station, does not matter which station. So, what can we do here? Uh, we can have a from relationship and a booking to So, booking from one station to another and booking uh, sorry booking from a station and uh, to another station and we have treated this as uh, two separate relationships here. Now, again there are other alternative designs possible. Uh, we could have had a ternary relationship uh, which is which associates booking with two different stations, uh, but it really is not important here. In this case, a booking has to have a from and a to station and it cannot be associated with more than one from station and more than one to station. A ternary relationship is useful when you have multiple combinations. Uh, so, maybe um, you know if you could have a booking which is from one station to another and the same booking can also be associated with another pair of stations then having a ternary thing might be meaningful, but here a ternary relationship is pretty meaningless it is much cleaner to go with binary, do not use uh, ternary or higher relationships unless there is good motivation. Here there is absolutely no motivation. Okay. So, we have got a, a booking is from station to another station. Uh, what else do we need? We need to know the uh, names uh, and so on of passengers. So, let us make it a multi valued attribute name age I am sorry, it is out of space here. So, I am going to continue this over here, okay, this is not proper uh, notation, this is just for convenience. So, there is a multi valued attribute which has name, age, uh, maybe gender, I do not know if you can read that, it is a little small uh, and then uh, continuing on there is a coach. I think the Indian railways probably assigns all seats for a particular booking on the same coach Maybe I am not sure, but let us assume that uh, each person in a booking could be on a different coach. So, we have a coach and then we have a seat of birth, let us just call it seat. So, this is now a multi valued attribute. So, this is a continuation. So, the curly bracket starts here and inside the curly bracket we have uh, name, gender, uh, age, coach and seat. So, that is um, as far as the booking is concerned. The last part that we wanted to model is uh, that a train uh, goes through a series of stations and we want to know for each station uh, what is the sequence number in the path of that train oh, and then there is one more there is a track relation. So, there are two relationships which we still need to model. So, let us um, start with the track relationship, track is the relationship from station back to station. Okay. So, we can if tracks are directional that is uh, traffic is only allowed to go in one direction, we might have a, a from and a to here but in our simplified model we are assuming there is no uh, directionality to the track just that these two stations are connected by a track. And then a train uh, goes through a series of stations. 
So, we need a relationship between train and station. So, let us say travels through or we could call it schedule, train goes through a station, but we actually need more information. We need to know what is the sequence number, is it the first station in the uh, journey of this train, the second and so on. It may or may not stop, but still is it the first station that it passes through. So, we want a sequence number and then uh, what else do we need? We want a time in and a time out. So, these are all attributes of this relationship travels through. So, that is um, the complete set of attributes. Now, what if a train starts at a station? Uh, then the, is there a time in for that station? Maybe you could uh, track when the rake actually reaches the station. This is something which the railway sometimes announces, uh, but usually does not. So, maybe a time in should be left out and let us make it null. What about for the last station along the route that it does not actually leave that station officially. Of course, once it drops off passengers, it may be taken off to the yard for cleaning. Uh, so, there is no time out for the last station. For all other stations, there will be a time in and a time out. Now, note that um, travels through is a relationship between train and station. And as we said, a particular uh, train entity and a particular station entity cannot be related by more than more than once from the same relationship. Uh, so, the primary key for travels through would be station code which is the primary key for station and train number which is the primary key for train. Now, this uh, rules out trains which pass through the same station multiple times within a particular trip. I do not know if such trains exist. Um, I would not be surprised if uh, there are some weird routes that do this. It is unlikely, but not impossible, uh, but we have uh, ruled out such things here. I mean, I do know that there are stations where the train actually uh, temporarily leaves the station and comes back uh, in order to reverse the rake or some such thing. Um, so, those are not really modeled here. So, what we have is now a reasonably complete ER diagram for the train uh, thing which we started off. Uh, if there are any questions about this, um, let, please ask. I am already seeing a few questions on chat. So, I urge all of you who have questions to please ask it on chat. The first question I am seeing is how are j a gender and age a multi-valued attribute? Actually, what we have here is it is not that each is a multi valued attribute, it is actually a composite attribute which has name, age, gender, coach, seat, and that whole thing is multi valued. What does that mean? Uh, think of uh, name, age, gender, coach, seat as one tuple. The multi valued uh, attribute here is like a set of such tuples, much like a relation nested inside of an entity here. So, um, if a name, uh, if passenger were an entity, we could not just stick name here. We would have had to had a, have a relationship with passenger and then age, gender and so on would be part of passenger. And then coach seat could be part of the uh, relationship attributes for the relationship between booking and passenger. So, that is an alternative design. Okay. Are there other questions on chat? There is a question before this which says um, differences between ER diagrams and UML diagrams. UML is a big thing, UML class diagrams are the part which are closely related to ER diagrams. So, in our slides we do have um, uh, details of uh, uh, comparing uh, our ER notation with UML class diagram. I kind of rushed through that at the end of today morning session. Uh, so, if you, you can go back to those slides and see the comparison, the notation differences between our ER notation and the UML class diagram. Now, obviously, if you use some other uh, ER notation, there are going to be other differences also. Ours is very close to class diagram. Um, there are other questions on chat. Meanwhile, maybe we can take some questions live. 
ओके टीम कॉलेज बॉय सर सर हाउ टू कन्वर्ट द स्कीमा इन टू रिलेशनशिप ओके इन जनरल ओके दैट्स अ गुड क्वेश्चन लेट्स सी सो दैट बाय कन्वर्टिंग दिस पर्टिकुलर स्कीमा इनटू अ सेट ऑफ रिलेशंस ओके सो दैट वुड बी अ गुड एक्सरसाइज सो लेट्स कीप दिस स्कीमा इन माइंड सो लेट्स टेक स्टेशन station is going to become a relation and then track is going to become a relation these are all uh, entities and relationships train is going to be a relation uh, before that uh, we need to add the constraints on this because that affects the relational design i forgot to put constraints on this so let's uh, put the relevant ones booking is obviously for a particular train right it can't be for two trains so there is an arrow there from booking to train now similarly a uh, booking uh, is from one station and to one station so we have and similarly here and moreover a uh, booking must have a from and a to station so this is a total relationship and a booking must be for a train so that is also total okay now how about train uh, travels through is that a total relationship a train had better tra travel through at least one station in fact at least two so we could actually put a more complex cardinality constraint here total means at least one uh, th that means a train should participate in at least one instance of travels through but in fact a train has to have a start and a stop station and maybe other stations along the way so the minimum is two so a train must travel through at least two stations so let's put two and it can travel through many stations we really don't have a bound on it how many we don't know depends so two dot dot star this is saying more than just total total means one dot dot something two dot dot star is a little stronger than just total relationship and on the other side uh, should the relationship between station and travels through uh, does it have to be total uh not necessarily there could be stations which don't have any train traveling through them at least scheduled trains um apparently in pakistan uh, this has been happening uh, uh, their railway system is in the shambles and they have uh, stopped uh, many many train routes so there are many stations with no trains going through them uh, luckily i think that's not been happening in india so we are not going to enforce a constraint that a station must participate in travels through how about in track can you have a station with no track uh, i don't think so okay so maybe we should enforce that a station must participate in track um so uh, if it must have a track coming in it must have a track going out so its participation on both sides of track if track were directional would be total no uh it must have at least one but it could have more than one also uh, in fact it's not bounded so we could just make it total which is equivalent of saying one dot dot star um or we could make it explicit here so let just to illustrate the other notation i'll say one dot dot star on both sides that's the same as saying total okay so those are the uh, constraints okay so i think we have all the constraints that we want and now we can start on the relational schema design so the first step is to create a relation for each of these station train track and so forth and what about these relations booking train booking from booking to are they going to be separate relations now remember these are many to one uh, relationships with total participation so in all these cases we can fold those relationships 
in uh, those relations into the booking relation uh, itself. So, booking can have an attribute called from, an attribute called to and an attribute called train number. So, we are going to do that. There are no separate uh, relations for these three uh, relationships. How about travels through? Travels through is not many to one, it is many to many. So, for that we will have to have a separate relation. So, now let us start listing the relations. The first one is station. Now, note that this is a schema diagram, it is no longer a ER diagram. I, I want to point this out and I want to draw it this way because many times people get confused between these. A schema diagram is showing an actual relational schema. Therefore, attributes like uh, from, to and um, you know uh, train number which would have been relationships in an ER diagram get folded in and become attributes in the schema diagram. Uh, so, the notation is different do not get confused between the two. So, station has a station code that is actually going to look much like the entity and it has a name. Uh, then you have a travels through. And this thing is going to have, unlike the relationship, it is going to have the primary keys of all the participating entities, in this case station and train. So, train number, station code. So, those are the uh, primary key attributes. Since it is many to many, both of them together will form the primary key here. And then we have the remaining attributes sequence number, time in, time out. Okay. So, now uh, what about train? Train becomes a relation also that is straightforward. There is nothing new here, train number and name and no new attributes. Now, we have a foreign key constraint. Note that uh, since this was a relationship which became a relation, uh, train number will be a foreign key this way and station code will be a foreign key. Now, note that the arrows in the schema diagram are foreign keys. They are not relationships, they are foreign keys because the attribute is here and it refers to that. Uh, then moving on, booking is a relation which now has uh, several attributes. Uh, it has a PNR, all the basic attributes are the same as before. Date, it has a multi valued attribute which we cannot put in line, we have to make it a separate relation. So, we will hold off on the multi valued attribute, but it also has the relationships. Let me just show it to you. Okay. If you can see it now, uh, the booking has booking to, booking from, and booking train, three relationships. Each of those is going to become an attribute of booking as we saw from to and train number. And uh, yeah, that is it as far as the attributes of booking go. But note that from to and train number were relationships which were folded in. So, each of these is going to become a foreign key. So, from is to station, 2 is also to station, while train number is a foreign key uh, referencing train. Now, what else is left? We have to have the multi valued attribute, which is going to become a new thing. It will become PNR, that is a primary key and then all the attributes of the multi valued attribute, which were name, uh, age, gender, coach and seat. So, now, we have to give a name to this. So, let us call it booking details. Now, what are the primary keys of these things? For booking PNR is the primary key as we saw, nothing new. For train, train number is the primary key. For booking details, um, the PNR is not 
primary key by itself, you need more. Um, so, if there are two passengers with the same name on the same booking, is that allowed? I kind of doubt it, but if it is allowed, then you may need to distinguish them in some way. Uh, so, instead of name, uh, the other option is use PNR coach and seat as the primary key. So, uh, it is not possible for two passengers to be given the same coach and seat. So, the uh, these three together uh, will uniquely identify a particular uh, tuple in the booking details table. And for that tuple, for that seat, who is it being allocated to, what is the area agent gender. So, that completes the um, relational schema for this particular ER diagram. Okay. So, the second part of today's tutorial is an ER diagram for this program. What is this program? This uh, particular workshop which all of us are participating in. Uh, so, we want to model various entities. What are the things we would model here? We do want to model participants, the people. Uh, we want to model uh, resource uh, centers, the, where all of you are located. And IIT Bombay could also be a resource center, a central one, but still it is a resource center. And then we want to model who is the coordinator at each resource center. We want to model the capacity of each center uh, and the faculty who are attending at each resource center. And for each uh, person, we also want to know which institute they are from. So, there are a uh, uh, few entities which we have to decide on. Obviously, a uh, person would be an entity here. A resource center would be an entity. Uh, what other entities do we have? Uh, would we might want to model the institute to which a person belongs as an entity. Why? Because we may want to have like restrictions on you know so many participants from a particular institute and so forth. And we may want to know which all uh, colleges have participated in this program. If we just turn it into an attribute of person, you can put in any old value there and there will be chaos. So, we want to model institutes as entities. So, let us uh, keeping that in mind, let us uh, start on the diagram. So, we have a person. Now, how is the person identified for the purpose of a workshop like this? There is usually an ID, name and any other information that the workshop may choose to collect about that person. And then there is an institute which is where they are from. Uh, so, we may have a unique key for it uh, which is uh, again created somehow. Let us call it inst ID. Then we may have a name, location and maybe a few more attributes here which whatever we wish to keep track of. And now, we need a relationship between the two, where is this person from. So, we can say um, space is a little limited here. I do not know if you can read that. It says belongs to, uh, you probably cannot read it, it is too small, uh, but that says belongs to. Can a person belong to more than one institute? No. So, let us put in that constraint right away that a person belongs to only one institute and a person must belong to an institute for the purpose of this workshop. You cannot just walk in from nowhere and participate. Therefore, a person must have a total participation in belongs to. Okay. So, that is one part. Then we have a resource center. Again, we will have a R, let us call it R ID, resource center ID. Uh, we have a name, capacity, now typically a resource center is actually part of an institution, it is not separate. So, instead of modeling it like that, instead of having a um, resource center ID here, we could have model it differently also. We could have used the institute ID. Um, 
so if you had at most one resource center per institute, uh, then you know we could just turn this into. Um, uh, it could even be a. Uh, what are the options we have? It could be a weak entity identified by the institute because uh, you know it has to belong to an institute and if we only allow one resource center per institute there's no need even for a discriminator uh, that is no key and so you can just get rid of rid name everything can go and it simply becomes a weak entity with only one attribute capacity or other things that you want descriptive attributes and linked by a identifying a relationship um, part of let us say a resource center now part of an institute. So, we have forced that. We could keep it independent by having a separate resource center ID. I am not sure how it is actually done for this program, whether there are separate IDs for resource centers and institutes. Uh, then we need to know that a person attends uh, this course at a resource center. Now, all of this we have simplified by saying it is just for one course. Uh, you may want to model courses and so on, but we have kept it simple because we just had a limited time. So, we may have a person attends a resource center. So, for one course, a person can presumably attend only one resource center and must attend, at, uh, well, not must attend, some people may not attend, they may be coordinators and so forth. So, at most one resource center, let us put an arrow that way. Now, we said we also want to keep track of who is the coordinator for each resource center. So, let us make that another relationship coordinator between resource center and person. Now, depending on whether we allow more than one coordinator, we might have a arrow or not. If we allow only one resource, uh, one coordinator per resource center, then we would have an arrow like that. Okay. So, uh, yeah, what else do we need? Uh, sometimes we have a registration number for a person. We may have a person ID and the person is attending this resource center, uh, but we have a sequential number 1, 2, 3 within the um, resource center for convenience. We could uh, certainly do with the person ID, but if you wanted a sequence number, roll number of some kind or uh, registration number, we could add that also. The registration number is some kind of confirmation that yes, you have registered with us and this is a number which is given as confirmation. So, that basically wraps up our ER design for uh, this particular task. Again, there are many variants possible. Uh, we will not go into every one of them. Uh, so, let us stop the design here and now we will take questions. Okay, we have NRA Institute, Bhopal, please go ahead. Sir, uh, I have a single query. Uh, you told in 7.27. Slide number 7.27. Mm -hmm. How entity? So my question is, mm -hmm. how entity set plays a role in relationship? Give another example other than that prerequisite uh, role. The role, right? So we actually had uh, several examples uh, right in the previous one. Uh, let me go to the whiteboard. Yeah. So here uh, we had track which is uh, between two stations. Now, here we did not bother giving a role identifier because it is kind of symmetric. Um, however, if you have a directional track and the railways actually does bother about this. If you have two tracks, they have different track numbers and they may be called something as simple as up and down, uh, but let us say that they have a separate number. And then a track is uh, if it is directional also, this is typically how the railways operate. Tracks are directional assuming there are at least two tracks. There are segments with single tracks where the track is not directional, the trains go in both directions, um, but typically you have two tracks at least and tracks are directed. So, then 
uh, the track here would look like this. Okay, we have not given a role name here. but we would have to do it in that case and the role names would be from and to. Okay, so, we have uh, role indicators along with the ages. So, it is a relationship from station back to station, uh, but we have two separate role names and when we uh, end up creating a relation from the track relationship, the uh, two attributes of that track relation will be from and to. So, we have a direction established from one station to another station. Did I answer your question? Uh, sir, can we add another uh, attribute or we can say column mm -hmm. in the same table mm -hmm. station mm -hmm. so that this problem can be solved? Uh, which problem? Can uh, we add another column uh, for this uh, the uh, same track in the example? same station uh, table? Same track example? Uh, um, okay, yeah, I sir, I for I the track. Adding a column to the station table is not going to help you because there may be many tracks uh, into and out of a particular station. So, the uh, only way to model this is by uh, having the roles for the track from and to. Uh, you cannot link it with the station in any way. Does it answer your question? Okay. Uh, that if we have a generalized entity, that sure. how can we represent its actual occurrence in the uh, program? Or, okay. so, or in the database. Okay. So, a person is a generalized entity with uh, specializations being employee and student and so forth. So, if the question is how do you translate this to a relational schema, uh, then we saw that. We saw two different ways of translating it. In both the cases, uh, we had tables for person, student and uh, employee, uh, but the attributes in those tables were different. Uh, there is also a special case where we can do away with the person table. If we know that the uh, specialization is uh, total, that is every person must be a student or an employee and furthermore, it is non-overlapping. So, everyone can be only one of employee or student, cannot be both, then we can get rid of the person table. But otherwise, we have to keep the person table along with the employee and uh, student table. Uh, does that answer your question or is it something else again? That means, uh, in instantiating an object only from the generalized class. Yeah. So, if you think of it in you mean terms to say of that uh, objects, uh, then uh, you know you have an object which can play multiple roles. It can uh, uh, be a person, it can be a student, it can be an employee. Now, most object oriented programming languages insist that an object must have a most specific type. That is, you cannot have an object which can be both a person and an employee and a student. It can be a person and a student by virtue of being a student. It is automatically all the super classes. If it is an employee, it will automatically be a person also. But it cannot be an employee and a student unless you have one more class below it, which is uh, both an employee and a student. And then the most specific class of the object would be that other thing. Uh, but that is not a fundamental restriction of the idea of object orientation. Uh, in fact, some of the oldest object oriented languages allowed uh, object to take on multiple roles and to be in multiple classes without having to be in a most specific class. I do not know if this was related to your question, but it is uh, a point to be noted here. Uh, when we um, uh, go from this to object uh, oriented database, we are not going to cover it here, but that was an issue which people had to sort out. So, I think the object oriented features in the SQL standard also went the same route and said that a particular object in object oriented SQL must belong to a most specific class, uh, but uh, it, uh, the uh, specialization generalization of ER modeling is more general. It allows it, uh, anything to happen and this is actually the right way of doing things. Okay. Okay. Thank you, sir. Government Engineering College, Bikaner. Please go ahead. Hello. Yeah, so, I had a query regarding this uh, resource center problem. Yeah. Uh, actually, the, there is there might be n number of workshop held at a resource center, and then a person can be enrolled in n number of workshop at a time. Yes. So, how do you model these two? Okay. That's a good question. Uh, I simplified life a bit by saying this is for a single workshop. But in general, there can be many workshops. 
okay so how do we model that so let's uh, go back to the diagram and then see how to modify it okay so what we have here is um, somebody is a coordinator for a resource center attends a resource center and so forth but actually they don't attend resource center you are attending a particular workshop at a particular resource center so what we want is um, something which models this that somebody is attending a workshop at a resource center now we have a few options for this so maybe we can have a ternary relationship uh, which links a person a workshop and a resource center so first of all we have to introduce a notion of workshops this dbms course is one such workshop and then there are others so let's add a workshop here don't have much space in this figure let's work with what we have so we have workshop and uh, there may be a name date and so forth okay so the coordinator's workshop is one workshop the main workshop which is going on is another workshop now we could have a person who is in a workshop at a resource center so each of these coordinator and attend could become ternary relationships so now we could simply add that and this also can do okay so now we have a uh, ternary relationships to model this issue but there are alternatives uh we could have modeled instead of a resource center workshop we could also have something which is a uh, relationship between a resource center and a workshop so we have what we have not modeled is the fact that a resource center uh, is linked to a workshop independent of the coordinator so even if we don't have a coordinator at this point a resource center may have agreed to run a workshop so maybe there is a relationship we can give it some suitable name I, one given name right now which links a, a resource center to a workshop so now um this relationship can be turned into an aggregation so we i didn't really cover aggregation but aggregation in the er um, modeling context takes a relationship and treats it as an entity so this relationship between a resource center and a workshop could be treated as an entity so then uh, in diagrammatic notation uh, let me start a, a new sheet here because this is getting too messy we would have resource center I'm not going to show the attributes just the entity set workshop this is a center for this particular resource center is acting as a center for this workshop and now things are related to this relationship that is a person can participate in this they can be a coordinator for this and so forth so now what aggregation does is take this relationship and treat it as an entity diagrammatically we show this relationship uh, with a name and identified by the other uh, entity set that participate and then draw a box around it and now we can link this to person so now a person can participate in this attend let's say person can attend this a person can be coordinator for this okay so what we have done is include the specific workshop and uh, we have a nice example of a aggregation now the aggregation basically uh, what did it do we had ternary relationships by taking one relationship the center for and turning it into an aggregation uh, we have now replaced that uh, those two ternary relationships by two binary relationships and it's actually easier to understand this uh, 
it is a little cleaner. In terms of the relations that get created in the end, it will be pretty similar, there is not a big difference. I did not talk about how to convert aggregations to relational schema and so on, all those details are in the books, uh, book slides which are online. Uh, but the final result will look pretty similar, but uh, in terms of the ER diagram, this looks a little cleaner, but it is an option. You could do the other one also, that is also fine, it is not nothing very wrong with it. So, uh, is there any follow up question on that? Uh, sir, so we treated this uh, resource center workshop as a single entity for the relation yeah. in this uh, aggregate resource. Okay, okay. Thank you, sir. Okay. I think we should uh, probably break now.